I would do anything, anything to protect my five grandchildren, including, as a last resort, shooting them. And to you, the British public, I know that there will be many people who are relieved. Holy shit, there's a guy booing during his resignation speech. What a le what a fucking legend. What a fucking legend. Holy shit. I want to ruin somebody's entire career's ultimate moment. <laughs> By booing over it. Incredible. And to you, the British public. I know that there will be many people who are relieved and uh, perhaps quite a few who will also be disappointed. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. But them's the breaks. And <laughs> so he's gone. He's fucked off then. He's resigned. Okay, so he's resigned, but he hasn't fucked off. Okay. Fucking, I mean, what do we have to do? Wait, wait for another few months whilst he takes the wallpaper down. She's, I'm loving this. What an exit. The, the Prime Minister forgot that his whip was a sexual predator. No answer to that one. No answer, no humility, no meaningful apology. For days, just more Dickensian twaddle and a little reshuffle. Not so much reshuffling deck chairs on the Titanic, more reshuffling cat shit on a litter tray. And the manner of his departure should tell you everything you need to know. No dignity, just desperation and delusion and a despotic disposal to cling to power, no matter the harm to our country. A Tory party facing the inevitable truth that they have been complicit in enabling one of the most dangerously incompetent and untrustworthy trustworthy, selfish individuals ever to have occupied number 10 for as long as they have. And what's beautiful is it was the lying that got him in the end. He leaves in disgrace as well he should, having exposed himself once and for all for what we always knew him to be. Not a statesman, but a sad little liar. A Shakespearean tragedy written by monkeys on typewriters. A Prime Minister who is as adept at lying at the dispatch box as he is to his string of mistresses. Every marriage Boris has had has ended when he fucked someone else and got them pregnant. That's who he is. Lies on top of lies on top of lies. He lies and gets people to lie on his behalf and then lies about the lying. And when he runs out of lies, he can always rely on the incompetence card. I forgot, I can't remember. I don't understand what the word party means. My willy just ended up inside my secretary. Oh, I forgot that he's a renowned sex pest. Essentially, a man who would rather pretend to be stupid than admit his mistakes, which, of course, makes him a coward. A desperate, sad, talentless flag shagger who is so blatant in his dishonesty that when accused of lying to Parliament, he simply tries to change the rules to make it OK to lie to Parliament. Who, when his own ethics advisers resign in disgust at his complete lack of ethics, scraps the role of ethics advisor altogether, which proves his complete lack of ethics. But... The devastating cries over the last few days from the Tory party of enough is enough and one step too far are coming from the same people who have sat and watched him take a flamethrower to their party and our constitution for three fucking years. Fuck up after fuck up, lie after lie. And, and, and they were thinking what? Oh, he'll get better in a minute. All of them talking about trust and integrity. If you cared so much about trust and integrity, then why the fuck did you put Boris Johnson in number 10 in the first place? All of the reasons they're getting rid of him now, lack of leadership, lack of morals, lack of integrity, lack of truth, all these traits have been in plain sight for years. His CV reads like a demon's resume. These noble cabinet ministers all falling on their swords. These are the fuckers that enabled Boris to be there in the first place. And just look at what he's achieved. Trust in politics at a lower ebb than that time President Trump told Americans to drink bleach. A government with a complete 
absence of ethics, morals, direction or ideas, a ministerial code in the bin, an oven-ready Brexit deal that even Boris admits is unworkable, a Covid response that has been found to be criminally negligent, a United Kingdom inches away from complete devolution, an economy in tatters, a recession on the way, a health service barely fit for purpose, a country on the verge of a national strike, a man who took an 80-seat majority and just spaffed it up the wall in the name of hubris and ambition, destroying his party's reputation and leaving the UK ungovernable. What a legacy. Chaos. He leaves office the most hated man in his party and his country. And even though he's resigned, he's still fucking there. Just fuck off and we'll take our chances with the next useless posh sliver of bollock skin who gets to shag their mistress in the £50,000 floral wallpaper gin palace and factory of lies that Number 10 has become under Boris Johnson. OK, well, we're, we're still waiting to get a clearer picture as to the timeline as to the Prime Minister's departure, but it is safe to say that there are... Sorry. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Let's uh, let's take a look about. Uh, wait. We have another song that we should have added to the. We should have added this. Prime Minister to receive a fine ice scoff, cheese and wine, and let the bodies how high there was no truth under Downing Street's roof. But this ain't no lie. I'm saying bye bye bye. I sacrificed the country for my own ambition. The worst this century to hold the position, and that's up against some stiff competition. Thank God I am saying bye 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 bye. And we have a quote from Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn says. Johnson is the third PM to fall in six years because there is no solution to the deep economic and environmental crisis we face that picks our pockets and steals our future. Real change isn't a new Tory PM, but a new politics to redistribute wealth and power. They could have had Jeremy. They could have had Jeremy. Breaking news. My source has confirmed that Juan Guaido has declared himself interim prime minister of the United Kingdom. All right, let's let's. If you're like, Mike, what's going on with Boris Johnson? You didn't explain it. Here. Here. There are days for adjectives and there are days for cold facts. The prime minister gets up. He's going nowhere. He sends his newly appointed chancellor, Nadim Zahawi, to do the morning round of broadcast interviews. At 8.11, Laura Trott from the Department of Transport resigns. Mr. Zahawi keeps talking. 8.25, Will Quince, Education Minister, resigns. Mr. Zahawi concludes. 9.43, Robin Walker, Education Minister, resigns. 11.05, Felicity Buchan, Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Department of Business, resigns. A minute later, John Glenn, Treasury Minister, resigns. But at 11.36am, Victoria Atkins, Justice Minister, resigns. At midday, Joe Churchill, Environment Minister, resigns. 40 minutes later, Stuart Andrew, Housing Minister, resigns. Followed in quick succession by Claire Coutinho at the Treasury, David Johnson at the Department for Education and Selene Saxby from DEFRA. By now, the Prime Minister has completed questions in the Commons, during which he was savaged by Keir Starmer, the Labour leader. Awful behaviour, unacceptable in any walk of life. Yeah. It's there for all to see, but he ignores it. Yeah. It was the same when his ally was on the take from the lobbyists. Yeah. Yeah. It was the same when his Home Secretary was bullying staff. It was the same when taxpayers' money was being abused. Yeah. And it was the same when he and his mates parted their way through lockdown. Yeah. Anyone quitting now after defending all that hasn't got a shred of integrity. Yeah. Mr Speaker, isn't this the first recorded case of the sinking ships fleeing the rat? Yeah. The Prime Minister, accustomed to roars of approval from the Tory benches, was mostly heard in silence. After that, Sajid Javid, who resigned as Health Secretary last night, told the Commons that enough was enough. I have concluded that the problem starts at the top, and I believe that is not going to change. And that means that it is for those of us in a position who have responsibility to make that change. Michael Gove, the levelling up secretary, then writes to the Prime Minister withdrawing his support. Controversially, he does not resign. 
at 2.24. Kemi Badnock, Equalities Minister. Alex Berghardt, Education Minister. Julia Lopez, Minister of the Department for Culture. Neil O'Brien, Minister of the Department for Leveling Up. And Lee Rowley, Minister for Industry, resigned. For Two up. minutes later, Mims Davies, Employment Minister of the Department for Work and Pension, resigns. In the course of the afternoon, as Tory MPs discussed changing their internal rules so they can remove Boris Johnson later this month, another six ministers resign. Yet another prime minister. Yet another conservative prime minister. Jesus Christ. Imagine if Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi resigned after they fucked something up. A couple of things. Firstly, we need to make sure that we keep the basic functions of government going. Uh, that's really important. There are, for example, uh, no ministers in DfE at the moment. That needs to be sorted out. Uh, secondly, I think we need to try and select a new leader as quickly as we reasonably can. I and mean, obviously, uh, we need to make sure we make, make the correct choice, uh, but we should do it in a reasonably quick time. In terms of Boris staying on, the convention is that the outgoing Prime Minister um, does carry on. Uh, that's what happened when uh, Theresa May left office, is what happened when David Cameron left office. And, you know, given that, as we just... Incredible. Incredible. Uh, well, we're going to have to see who's, uh, who they're going to line up behind in the UK. It's going to be another disaster. There's really no good political outcome there. You got the male equivalent of Hillary Clinton versus whoever conservative ghoul they prop up next. There's really no, there's really no good outcome in the, in the UK. Sorry. 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 Uh... Bernie's Boris Johnson is being compared to Bernie on Fox. And quite frankly, I think that this is um, conservatives stepping up and re trying to reclaim uh, what is conservatism, because Boris Johnson has been anything but. He uh, one of his biggest moves was a uh, two and a half percentage point increase in the payroll tax to fund the National Health Service. A, he adopted a Labor Party proposal. That's the, the Liberal Party in Britain, a windfall profits tax on energy companies. There's a plan to increase corporate taxes. That's not conservative. That is to paraphrase yeah. the Wall Street Journal's editorial board. That's straight out of Bernie Sanders playbook. And quite frankly, it kind of tells you where we are as a party is that the Democrats are in power. They won't even sniff at a windfall profits tax, but the conservatives and the UK are doing it. That's how far right America is. Am I going to be discussing it? Housing market crash? Yeah, I will be. Uh, I heard that, uh, I heard that Hassan was trying to defend Boris. I heard that the fa Hassan was defending his fellow Turk. See what I mean about those Turks? Following his resignation, Boris Johnson has escaped to the sea. He's Ottoman? I knew it. I knew it. Speaking of crazy fucking right-wing shit, they killed the Georgia Guidestones. Uh... Honestly, I, I know it was a right winger who did it, but still, it's pretty funny. Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about the Guidestones. Oh, yeah, we should talk more about the Guidestones. Being blown sky high. Well, Alex, one thing I always appreciate about you is you bring up the issues that a lot of regular, normal people talk about. And the Georgia Guidestones uh, have always been something that people have been confused over. People have talked about. People have researched. People have traveled from far distances to come see these things. I'm not a particular fan of them because I'm, uh, as, as you know, like you, completely against the globalist agenda and against population control. Uh, I just heard the news uh, probably about two hours ago about, about these things being blown apart. And I think it just shows where we are today. There's really a war of good and evil going on. And people are done with globalism. People are not going to go along with the new world order, the liberal world order, as, as the Democrats call it, and, and what's happening today. So I think it's really interesting and looking forward to hearing more information. First of all, the Georgia Guidestones were written by a far writer who probably would vote for Marjorie Taylor Greene. And, and this is kind of a weird far right obsession because they are weird and they have a population control. They have a kind of eugenics flavor. That's what the Georgia Guidestones are.
They told us what they wanted to do. Some might even say we talked about this before. I had to get our permission. Like dumbass shit again. To at least tell us ahead of time, even if we didn't believe them. Over four billion people have been injected with something that took just nine months to create. Ask yourself why. Back in biblical times, human sacrifice was a form of demonic worship. We're still doing it in present day by killing our unborn. It's the same demons, it's the same sacrifice, it's the same sin, it's just a different time. This is a long shot in and of itself, running for governor against an incumbent. Why are you doing this? If we don't call things out and we don't acknowledge them and we don't take authority, and take dominion over what God's given us, then we are no better than the evil ones that put it up. We've watched as people have destroyed our history and monuments, and in their place, they have erected statues to their own gods. The new world order is here, and they told us it was coming. It's a battle far greater than what we see in the natural. It is a war between good and evil. I mean, you can laugh at this and you should laugh at this, but understand that this is the same kind of fascist occultism that the Nazis had. They had all sorts of dumbass shit like this, and people laughed at the fuck, laughed the fuck at them until they were in power. <laughs> and this is this is the people that are that are gonna win when the Democrats fail. Now, here's what I have to say. I mean, two shootings on July Fourth, one in a rich white neighborhood, and the other at a fireworks display. It almost sounds like it's designed to persuade Republicans to go along with more gun control. I mean, after all, remember, we didn't see that happen at all the pride parades in the month of June, but as soon as we hit MAGA month, as soon as we hit the month that we're all celebrating, loving our country, we have shootings on July 4th. I mean, that's, oh, you know, that would sound like a conspiracy theory, right? Of course. But what's the definition of a right-wing conspiracy theory? Well, by the way, it's the news that's just six months early. Now, you mean like when you said that the Sandy Hook shooters were fake or when you harassed David Hogg, a survivor of the Parkland shooting? Or like, what are you talking about? When you said Donald Trump was going to be returned to office? Like, what, what news? What the fuck are you talking about? At my old jobs, politics was very touchy, but me and my coworker would openly go on about Margie by referring to her as Magic the Gathering. Right. Oh, these are the hogs. These are the hogs. From Arizona is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Representative Jordan. I rise in opposition to HR 2377. I have five grandchildren. I would do anything, anything to protect my five grandchildren, including, as a last resort, shooting them, if I had to, to protect the lives of my grandchildren. Democrat bills that we've heard this week want to take away my right, my right, to protect my grandchildren. They want to take away the rights of law-abiding citizens to protect their own children and grandchildren and wives and brothers and sisters. This bill takes away due process from law-abiding citizens. Can you imagine if you had a disgruntled ex or somebody who hates you because of your political views and they go to a judge and say, oh, this person is dangerous. And that judge would take away your guns, lean on the side of conservatism, take away the guns without that person even having a, a knowledge that there was a court hearing that would take away their guns. This is wrong. When Republicans were in the majority, we actually passed legislation that was signed into law that would have prevented mass shootings. 
these bills would not. We need to join together, Republicans and Democrats, I hope they can do it in the Senate, and get something done that actually saves children's lives. And with that, I yield back. So, she, the batshit crazy Republican Congresswoman said, I would shoot my own grandchildren. Uh, you should probably not have a gun if you say stuff like that. All right, chat, let's just enjoy more hogwatch. Housing market is beginning to crash. And we'll do some fresh hogwatch. This is, this is some, this is some happy content for me. Both of these things are positive. The Snorri Masson. You know that saying where, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail? Well, you could also say it by, by playing this clip of Jordan Peterson. A hammer's a little bit too strong of an object to describe him, but I, I see what you're saying. Well, when you're a nail file, everything's a uh, nail. A nail. There we go. I usually touch on religious issues and then cultural issues pertaining mostly now to the culture war that we seem to be engulfed in, I would say, not only in the West, but in the rest of the world. And does anyone actually think our problems are due to the culture war? Like, legitimately, does, like the brain level of stupidity you need to have is incredible which has actually broken out into a real war because i believe that the war between russia and ukraine or really between russia and the west rest of the west is a civil war not just a uh what would you call it post-soviet territorial expansion on the part of the russians um what what values do you think are at stake there like russia against the west what do you think it's fighting it's just is it Liberal values against conservative, or is it something more no, it's, complicated? No, it's, it's more complicated than liberal against conservative. Well, I think the Russians are, or yes, I think Putin has weaponized a certain degree of anti-woke sentiment among Russians. And some of that anti- Thanks for the 500 bits. Needless backstory, I appreciate that. And congratulations on the local work you're doing. He woke doctrine, let's say, which is more conservative. He may also believe, but minimally he's managed to use it very effectively on the propaganda front. And uh, that's certainly one of the factors that's driving the war and sustaining it and causing it. And so uh, let's be clear here. Let's be clear here with something. The, to the extent that there's any, the idea that Putin The Ukrainians is, represent left-wing culture war is incredible. 90, uh, half, their, half their followers are wearing fucking uh, uh, far-right uh, paraphernalia on their equipment. But yeah, uh, they're, they're representing the globo homo hordes. And it's Putin that's fighting against it. Incredible brain. Up yours, woke moralists. ...is selling his invasion of Ukraine to Russians based upon the Ukrainians being too woke is insanity. It's directly opposite. To it, it is, like, to the extent that there's any... They, they're saying, to the extent that they're saying anything that can be construed as cultural in any way, it is denazification. It's like literally 180 degrees from what this guy is saying. But he is so obsessed with his raging culture war that exists in his head. Which is, which is the only reason anybody knows who, why, who he is and why he exists. And incidentally, the thing that he quit uh, being a professor about because he couldn't mispronoun people without going to jail... That was a law that was passed five years ago in Canada, which not only did not say that, but can be shown because no one has gone to jail yeah. in five years. Now, maybe everybody else just can handle using the right pronouns. But this dude has been all over Twitter and he got uh, booted because of it, because he would dead name Elliot Page. Where's he been with Caitlyn Jenner? Odd. Odd, isn't it? He like, needs to go to jail. He just needs to go to horny jail. It's just, it is, it is just like, we, we just let a madman run around just, you know, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't uh, let him run around, let him run around. But it's, it's amazing the people who are making money off of pretending he's not out of his 
freaking mind. Yeah. And also, didn't Putin say something about how the West was trying to, quote, cancel Russia? Like, he was appropriating some of the culture war concepts that Peterson is describing, like the anti-wokeness. But he's trying to say that it's not liberal versus conservative or left versus right. No, that's exactly what it is. It's too complicated. <laughs> it's not liberal conservative. It's woke unwoke. That's it. It's much more complicated. It, it's wokeness. just a way for his audience to feel like they are not a standard Republican because they're obsessed with these culture war topics. And like, yes, Putin, a right wing president, is using right wing talking points to justify his invasion of Ukraine. Yes. Those sons of fish. Them boys in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Peterson was asked by Penguin Random House to uh, write the foreword for uh, Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. That, is that, that guy. Is that true? That is 100% true. Totally went over my head. What? Uh, Gulag Ar Archipelago is a, a sort of famous uh, book about gulags in Soviet Russia, and they got Peterson to write the foreword for it. Cause, like, that's actually true. That's actually true. Huh. He was a man. He was a man, and he would make his bed every morning, despite the fact that he was sent to Siberia. <laughs> make his bed. First thing. <laughs> the cleanest room in all the Google, gulag. Gulag archipelago <laughs> sucks, by the way. <laughs> anyway. The uh... deprivation, the torture. But he always made his bed. So, there you go. So, I'm taking no questions. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers, and I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.